What's up, people? You're listening to the Two Pro One Slow podcast, brought to you by Factory Image Racing. Check them out on Instagram at Factory Image Racing. They offer a huge range of hard parts, service parts, tools, and more. Right, we're back for one more episode. It's number seven, is it? Six? Seven. Seven. Think, number yeah. seven. It's, uh, sponsored by Factory Image Racing again. And if you're watching, you can see we've replaced the useless dosser in the middle with another useless dosser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so we've got Billy's mechanic, Lee, with us today. Tommy's having a nap. Tommy's asleep, isn't he? Do I get Tommy's uh, day rate? Yeah, well, you can get 10% of Tommy's day rate if you want, which is 10% and nothing's nothing. Oh. Never mind. Yeah, that that, that that didn't take off from despite his best efforts. Tommy, his dummy's here and uh, goodwill. It's just me and Ed that get paid. It was a bit last minute. There, she sort of just sprung it on me last night. So I haven't really written any notes or done anything of any worth. So no, that's better. That's freestyle. I have I got just, some voice notes. Uh, yeah, we've got. I seen there's been voice notes coming in. I got loads of questions to my story about Stan. Um, yeah, we did on so the two. I, I think we could just freestyle and basically. Um, uh, I've just been away in Spain for the week um, for the Husky bike launch for the new models and stuff and then flew back but then we're heading back out to Italy tomorrow for an unknown amount of time probably at least a good couple of weeks so we decided do a podcast before we go um, and Tommy is already away racing this weekend at Fox Hills so we decided we'd sub him in for Stan who would be meaning to get on the podcast anyway I think it would have been good still if Tommy was here because Tommy and Stan seem to have this bit of a connection between them um, Do you like Tommy Stan? Yeah I do actually we get on quite well he's uh, he's on my wavelength to be honest uh, They're both thick as fuck <laughs> um, But anyway so now we've just filled him with Stan so yeah, he's he's been a requested guest in. He's definitely well, There was quite a few people In fact there's a voice note Of someone saying When's Stan coming on Yeah to be Like I said to Billy On the way um, I think this one Will take off <laughs> We'll get a lot of <laughs> do, you know, do you know What I want Everyone that's watching To do Because Tommy actually Thinks that, it, that He's the only one That gets us the views Share the life out this yeah, one, please, and yeah, tell everyone right. to watch it, even if it's for a second, just to get the click. Ah, but rate I, I think it'll be good. Now. I think it could, he is right. To be honest, he, he's he can generate the the traffic himself, but he might as well share it anyway, just to help. Yeah, but just need just so it's got more views than any others, so we can say to Tommy, "Look, mate, we don't need you." Yeah, we don't need you, and then we can just say we can turn it into one pro two slow. In fact, no, you're not slow. You're quite good, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Billy have this discussion quite a while. Well, what do you say to me, well, Joe? I've got to ask you a couple of questions. Yourself? As, no, asking... Well, one, couple, one of them was, uh, how does Stan feel giving up his promising NGO career to be my mechanic, which he's obviously pissed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a couple, just asking how, who's faster between me and Stan. Uh, how good was Stan? Just a, couple, just a few about Stan's riding career. So go on. That's a good starting point. Tell me about your riding career, Stan. Where where did you come from? What did you do? Well, to be honest, my riding career didn't really take off what? as much as I wanted it to, and I was trying it. Yeah, it didn't really happen. You had a good go at it, though, for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I did. To be fair, I was uh, 15, 16 when I went into Enduro. It's like started in trials and stuff, and um, then 15, 16 started Enduro. Used to do British Enduro Championships, all the like GBXC sprints and um, Heron Hounds. Done ISDE six days, did European race like rounds, done a few world rounds in the juniors, that type of stuff. And then, yeah, it just didn't really take off. Yeah, you're pretty handy there on a bike. Yeah, no, as, as I say, I, I, I could do it, but it, um, yeah, it, it didn't quite. I got to the age of like 20. 27, 28, never had a job in my life. Um, and then, yeah, I've kind of got to there and just thought, right, it's it's time to take it a bit serious now, doing other stuff. So, yeah, that's when we called it a day. When, oh. when are you going to start doing that then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that was one of the questions. Well, there was quite a lot of the same question, actually, saying sort of how did you become Billy's mechanic or start doing your rock star job? Yeah, it was kind of, it was weird. It was 2000, like 2016, I started to, to know Billy. I didn't know him before that because obviously my brother and Julian, he was spending a bit of time down at his house and the, he used to do training schools and stuff with... Just um, 
uh, Lee's Stan's brothers, obviously Paul Edmondson. For those that don't know, I'm sure most people listening will have heard of him. But if you hadn't done the uh, done the maths or didn't know the connection, um, that was that's sad. The one and only Fast Eddie. The Fast Eddie. Mm-hmm. Fastest Eddie? Or are you the fastest Eddie? No, he's the fastest Eddie. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, yeah, so he was spending a little bit of time down. Um, down the Midlands area and I've seen him a couple of times he rode can you remember you raced yeah. uh, a sprint you changed at Westwood my, you changed my foot pegs for us at Westwood because the foot pegs I had on were blunt and my feet kept slipping off <laughs> so um, I actually had some I don't know how I didn't have many spare parts in 2016 it probably just nicked them out of Graham's van or someone else's van um, yeah he changed my foot pegs I was strolling away in between tests changing foot pegs and then Stan come over and did them for a side shot foot pegs for the rest of the day um, it was about the first time oh no actually I think earlier that week I actually bought tyres off you to ride the race that weekend do you remember uh, no I don't remember that selling someone else's tyres no yeah. no that wasn't me that yeah, must have been my dad I would bought tyres off you earlier because I was at Paul's for that whole week actually I'd forgot about that but then my main memory was you changing my foot pegs at at the race yeah that's as I say that's when I first kind of knew you and then you were you were floating around and then obviously the end of 2016 you got a factory contract and then you had uh, you had a mechanic um, who started with him because there was a a lad up Lancaster called uh, Ian Holt and he was sponsoring Billy as well and he used if you when you seen Billy in like a big black sprinter at the races that was that was him so um yeah, I I kind of knew Ian and got to know him a little bit and Billy had this mechanic and obviously when you have a rider mechanic you have to try and connect a little bit. It's difficult when you're on both on different pages and stuff. So the start of 2017 uh, there was a British and en- uh, British extreme round in Wales, wasn't there? Yeah. And um very wet one. A very wet one. And the week before that um Ian Holt rang me and he just says, "Oh, what are you doing for the next, what's your plan for the next four weeks? And I said, oh, I haven't really got a plan. Um, And he just said, oh, do you fancy coming to Spain with, with Billy? So that, we went to that race and stuff like that. And it was, I didn't obviously have no involvement at that race and stuff. Billy was with his old mechanic and, and, and Ian. Um, I was actually, because it was Paul's event, I was actually marshalling. So Billy was obviously, he was doing well that day. He was leading. So obviously, I'm racing around the fire roads at every opportunity I can t- tell him to slow down because he was leading by quite a lot and back in 2017 it was a bomb waiting to go off <laughs> <laughs> it still is now it is but nah, it, it, it was it's a man really, this is Tim now compared yeah, to back then but really I was the boy was, that day to be fair it really was waiting to go off so I'm at <laughs> every road crossing slow down like <laughs> use, use your head and everything like that so anyway did that for about two laps a lap's like 45 minutes long so he was he was convincingly leading quite good. To be fair, he did have a few minute leads. So I'm there telling him to slow down and everything like that. So it's quite good. Got to the end of the race, kind of seen him on his way out and said, "Well done, that's that." And then Ian rang me that night and said, "Oh, we're going to go to Spain. Um, do you want to come?" I said, "Yep, yeah, no problem." But that the week before, I'd already yeah, agreed to go to uh, America because Paul's son Jack, he had just signed a contract to race GNCCs in America uh, on the one two five for Coastal. And Paul was like, oh, I can't go to the first round and stuff. I says, well, I'm not doing much. I said, oh, if you obviously sort it out, I'll, I'll go. So literally I flew out to America on the Thursday, prepped Jack's bike on the Friday for the race, changed his mooses and stuff like that. He raced the GNCC on the Sunday. He won the first round there. I literally flew then on the Sunday night, flew back to Birmingham and literally from, I didn't even go home or nothing, just, literally jumped on then Birmingham to Spain and went straight to Barcelona and Billy picked me up uh, on the Monday then in Barcelona just started doing stuff with him out there just helping him and riding a little bit and just ended up just getting on just clicking Um, but then it took to be honest uh, Billy's other mechanic was still employed then Uh, and obviously to be honest he'd not really done anything wrong so you couldn't really the, the factory in Austria and, and the Fabio in Italy couldn't really just sack him for because he'd done nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit difficult. So so you'd sort of, I didn't know this, but you was with Billy before he went to factory, Oski? 
No, you know, I, I yeah. signed for the factory, but my first mechanic um, uh, was like, I just, it was, he did nothing wrong. I had no reason to, to not. So your first year, you had a different mechanic? Like for the first three two months, months, three right, months, yeah. Well, I think he'll, Stan will know what month he started getting paid because <laughs> that was the first time he actually got paid, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was. Um, no, nah, so I had a different mechanic when I first signed for the factory, also an English guy, but we just didn't get on and didn't... Like, I, I didn't really know what I needed either at the time. Like, obviously, I'd only been doing NGO a year. I was actually just having this discussion with someone um, yesterday, one of the journalists at the Husky thing. Um, like, yeah, it was a bit weird. I'd only been riding literally a year and then signed a factory contract and still hadn't really even done many races or many international races that first year um, just because... I couldn't afford to more than anything. So I was like straight in like full factory, obviously every extreme race, bike parts. Like <laughs> when I first actually signed, when I first got my fa first factory bike, I remember what I rode it at just a, a, a track near my house and the, it was at a farm and he has a jet washer and it's super powerful and it blew the sticker off the back mud guard. And I was like concerned thinking, oh, I need to keep the sticker for like a race or something. So I remember I yeah, put it behind the sun visor thinking, oh, just in case I need to put it back on for like the first race I did. I didn't realise you could get unlimited stickers. Well, yeah, I didn't re I had obviously I'd never been a proper factory rider or anything like that. I didn't quite know how it worked or anything. So going back to like, what we're on about I, I didn't really know what I wanted or what I needed or, or anything really and I just kind of knew couldn't really didn't really not that I did, disliked them or anything I just didn't see a future and like I could, didn't really build a relationship anyway so so Stan came out to Spain obviously I'd met him in, in a couple of times the year before when I was kind of riding for myself and for 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 uh, like Julian and, and KTM UK and just being around poles and what have you so I I, I kind of already knew him and got on with him and then um, yeah he came out to Spain and, and worked for free for a couple of weeks or a couple of weeks uh, three months <laughs> three, three, counting. Three, three months, months. was it it was uh, like started to work and stuff and they eventually Billy I think they give him like first first they give him a polo shirt to wear. Oh, and not then because Billy wouldn't pay you because the factory weren't paying you. No, oh, no, it's to say obviously yeah, first Billy's he got mechanic. a polo shirt and then he got a kit bag and then he got some pants and then by the end of the third month I think he got some wages. Got a wage. <laughs> yeah, we got a wage then. As I say, the first race that I was meant to do with Billy, like I was, pro pro yeah. uh, professional race, was Le in two thousand and seventeen. So I like started to work at the start of May and. And everything, so oh, that, that was, is right. You are right. To be fair, that was uh, that was all all good. So I went out to do the bike. Well, no, the week before we had a sprint at Rogers Hill, uh, so we went down and did the sprint. Well, in he had a bit of an accident, didn't crash, went round the corner, and there's like some glass, wasn't there? No, it was a it was a fiberglass pipe. Yeah, and that went into his boot and mm. literally went into his foot. You've probably seen on Instagram uh, pictures and stuff, and it went in and. Uh, Literally, the last test, he was, I think he was lying second or third. third, third, and he says, right, he says, I'll go in the ambulance, but just duct tape my foot up so I can do this last test. <laughs> and bearing in mind, like, it was into his boot, you could see his foot in the boot, and we're like, maybe it's, we got us, like, uh, Lagars next week, Billy, like, it's going to get infected and, and stuff. No, no, just du put duct tape around it, I'll do this last test, and I promise I'll go in the ambulance. So that was that. So he did the last test, finished third, got into the ambulance, took the foot off, ended up, obviously, he went to hospital. It was a bit more serious than what we thought. He'd broke a bone and got yeah, it, I it was, was expecting infected. to be stitched up and riding the next day, but the, I was in hospital like a week, I think, in the end. Yeah. So you missed the race. So I missed Lagares that first year. Um, I flew out. But you I? still went because I was in <laughs> hospital. You, you were flying on like the Tuesday or yeah. the Monday, obviously, to get the bike ready for that weekend. Um, and I, I was in hospital still until... That, I think the next week so you were still there anyway um, but yeah my foot was quite bad it, the, the actual break wasn't, of my foot wasn't too bad they put a pin in my uh, foot I think they wired my my, uh, my metatarsal is it metatarsal or metacarpal in your foot tarsal I think metatarsal metacarpal is your hand so it was my, my metatarsal basically I just hacked my little toe off my foot um, so they put it all back on but because I'd rode um, the last test with it kind of all open it got infected um, and dirty I had to go into theatre twice <laughs> Fuck's sake. Why, why don't you just listen when they go look just give it a rest 
Was the British extreme for anything? Was you even was British? British I got five hundred quid for that. Oh, no, no, I would have got five hundred quid if I won at it. Probably got. I think it was a hundred quid or hundred and fifty <laughs> quid for coming third. You idiot! And there was n- other than a financial gain. There was no points, no championship. Of course, it was. It was the first round. I was oh, going right, to go for the right, championship. Right. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't because I missed the second the round because I was in hospital. The second day, <laughs> Jack was also in hospital that day. Do you remember? Yeah, we were in hospital together. Yeah. Jack Eddie, so Stan's Paul's son. Stan's nephew yeah. had crashed earlier in the day and broke his wrist, so we were in Dorchester Hospital together for a together. few days. I can remember on the Sunday night, Tech and Bow for yeah. Domino's Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then me going watching home. Supercross, I think, on my laptop in hospital. I was on a ward. It's a bit off topic, but it's a good story. I was on a ward. I'd, I'm guessing there was no space or left on, like the orth- left on the orthopaedics ward, and I was on an o- a ward full of, full of old people, and none of them knew where they were. There was a guy in the bed opposite us, who thought he was on a boat. <laughs> Every morning he'd wake up and he'd go, be ca- we're docking today, son, be careful they don't throw you off. <laughs> <laughs> what were they pumping him full of? Honestly, it was mental. And then there was another guy in the bed next door to him, so like opposite me and down one, who would just get up and wander, but he he, he had a catheter in. Fucking so he'd do like three steps and then that would pull and then he'd just hit the deck. Split the bag out with gravy. It was a, it was an eventful. <laughs> piss all yeah, yeah, piss all over the place. He'd do do two steps, and his catheter would pull, and then that would be on the deck. Honestly, it was it was mental. Um, I, I ended up going to Italy, and obviously we never really told him what had happened to start. We were just, and then about the Wednesday when I got there, we went. Yeah, Billy's not racing. He's broke his foot. And they went. I said, "What shall I do now?" And they went, "Oh, you're going to Portugal." So I literally drove. The other mechanic had the shits. So. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, honest. I literally drove from Italy <laughs> to Portugal. Never really been a been away like with the team or anything like that. This guy's having the shits, so I had to drive <laughs> the whole way from Italy to Portugal. No rider, put help put the tent up. Literally, I'm guessing with a load of people you didn't really know. Yeah, so. never met them before in my life. <laughs> yeah, and it was. I don't even think. You didn't even stay for the race, did you? No, I didn't even. No, I did. I stayed for the race, and then Sunday they flew me. They flew me back home. Then, so that was the thing. And then my my actual first race abroad was Erzberg with him. Mm. Yeah, because I remember that everyone said I wasn't allowed to do Erzberg when I was in hospital. Was is that the year you drank petrol? No, no. no. That, this was seventeen. Uh, 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 what did I do come that year? I think I was fifth or six. I, yeah, I do six. shit at Ersberg every year, but to be fair, I shouldn't have actually rode. I still had like a moon boot on when I was walking the track and stuff. Um, You'll never learn, will you? No. Nah. So, so is she toe 150 missing or not? 150 quid for finishing third. And the, the, the toe, the little it toe was just was like this, like side. As it, it was just dangling off my foot. It was all still attached, but I, I finished the last test anyway, and it was St. John's Ambulance at the track. And so I literally give my bike to Stan and got in the back and then it was this, this woman, this youngish woman, I'm guessing like a student or whatever, went to take my boot off straight away. But c- there was a split like on the top of my boot, which w- you could see like directly into the, the flesh was coming out, which was just taped over. And the woman went to just take my boot off without even taking the, undoing the tape or anything. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, just, yank it. just before you do that, you probably want to take that tape off and just make sure, see how it is. So uh, anyway, I took the tape off. I still thought I'm just going to hospital and get stitched up and I'll be racing the next day and I got to hospital and I was going to send you for an x-ray and I'm like, no, I don't need an x-ray, it's fine. Come back for an x-ray, she went, yeah, you're going to be staying tonight. I thought, brilliant. But anyway, well, you so had a bumpy we're start, like a good injury it? chat on this podcast, yeah, don't Yeah, you we? do. We've had a bumpy start to working together, but since then you've, uh, you've yeah, accomplished so, uh, some big uh, things. From then onwards, it's, you were actually employed and actually and my first member of staff. May two no yeah May two thousand seventeen was my first ever paycheck in thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as you probably gathered from that, it wasn't your typical mechanics route. But that's well, once, kind of well, now, so so moving on after those races and that, and the few years now, you've won two world titles together. Mm. Yeah, well, you've pretty much been there the whole of the yeah, professional yeah, career, the whole. pretty much from the start. I won. I've won another. I won uh, indoor world championship with Colton. Oh, yeah, that's true. As well. He's fucking. Oh, is that because he me? was injured? Yeah, yeah, he was I injured, my and then uh, the championship. They said, oh, "Fuck it, no. Josh." That was also Dorchester Hospital. Been you know, for that week as well. <laughs> he likes it there, man. <laughs> which, which is fucking miles away from my house. It's not the one for when you need to get picked up and you call <laughs> everyone. Fancy driving six hours tomorrow to come pick us up from hospital? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Tommy would pick you up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he'd have to have about four naps on the way. <laughs> so, yeah, actually. He actually does pull over. Now he's got a motor and he pulls over and has a nap on the side of the road. I'm not even joking. Oh, useless. Believe it. Useless human being. But, yeah, so Stan was Colton's mechanic for the 2019 yeah. Super Enduro World Championship. So you're back-to-back -back Super Enduro Championship. Yeah. Yeah, back-to-back. Second the first year we, we view, wasn't yeah, it? In true. 2017. 18. 18. Yeah, second. You just passed Taddy in the last race, didn't you, to get second? Yeah, he's had an incident with his shock, didn't he? Yeah, he did have an incident <laughs> with his shock. <laughs> what's the what's harder to for like a mechanic inside of things like indoor or, or the outdoor stuff? Well, that's a good question. Mm. I thought that one up myself. That was very good. Outdoor. Outdoor's harder. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh well yeah, it is Obviously, indoor, we've had a few issues, to be fair, where we've had to change an engine in between races or after practice or after qualifying, and he's had an issue, and we've had to change an engine. That's yeah, It's like a tight intense. turnaround town, but usually an indoor day goes pretty smoothly. Yeah. Touchwood. Normally, yeah. Touchwood, normally it does. I and mean, it's not Colton, really, so you don't wash fantastic. bikes or anything, but, but I guess you are. I say with Colton, it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. didn't uh, well, nah, you had to do <laughs> uh, It wasn't. You used to phone us every time you changed a tyre, saying, oh, fucking hate these tyre balls. <laughs> ah, yeah, that was true. Oh, wasn't fucking, it? Yeah. you're never using these fucking things in your wheels. <laughs> yeah, in America, they use tyre balls, and uh, there's I don't like know if I meant 30, to say that, actually, but 36, 36 you needed in the, in the back. What is it, like an inner tube? Yeah, just like an inflatable. It's, like, it's literally like an implant fake yeah. tit. Yeah. And All you the pump way. them up individually to a certain PSI. Yeah, each one had to be six PSI. So, you, what, and then you put it in pumped up, or do you have to drill no, no, load of individual in holes? Up. Put them in pumped up. Uh, and it was, it was a nightmare. He's like, ah... Oh. Uh, can we can we change a PSI to five? <laughs> I'm like, are you for real? Five. I've got to take every single tyre ball out, put them to five, and then put them all back in. And honestly, it was like 45 minutes, 50 mm -hmm. minutes to change it. Well, that's actually led us on quite nicely because we did a tyre change race here and you did both the front and the back wheel with a moose in five minutes, something. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my uh, prize money. This, here, this, this is, is it. it. You're this using is it. This is the oh. first time. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? This <laughs> is your podcasting kit. Yeah. Well, technically, just, uh, it's a bit mine because well, I think this was like a thousand pound 99 quid. So I oh, did so 99 quid of it. <laughs> All right. I'll well, I've it. done some upgrades. Since yeah, so we've arm. had, Ed, these are Ed's. The two other cam, well, all the cameras are Ed's. Well, the middle well. one's a shared camera, actually. I'm quite happy it's that it's gone back in. <laughs> Why is the middle one a shared camera? Because <laughs> it was our project. Oh, true, yeah. I did uh, upgrade that to to um, film the Revolutions movie. Yeah. By the way, I looked at that the other day. 256,000 views on... It's a great segment. It is a good segment. I'm very proud of the work on that one. Mm, I am too, very proud. But tyre change challenge on your channel, Billy. I'm very proud of that, and it didn't get enough views. No, it really didn't at all. So I don't know why. It. I thought that was... It's well, great. I, it's so entertaining. Tommy trying to change a tyre to the yeah. moves. That was that was good. Good day, that. Yeah, it was. Good crack. Nothing but laughs, was it, all day? No. Yeah. No, that worked. That was one of my better ideas of... Definitely. Um, I, I did do a few quick notes. Um, one's a bit... Well it's, well, it's a good note, actually. How do you put up with him, Stan? Because I get no end of videos on Snapchat of him fucking bullying the life out of you in hotel rooms. Yeah, but I only do that because now people, that's what the people want. Oh, my It's God. got to the point where people, are be, they'll know that we're at a test or at a race, and they'll be like, <laughs> send videos to Stan. Fucking hell. He just is. rips his tattle. It rips is an absolute pillow. Pillow. Pillow, pillow. pillow one's the best when he's asleep, but just, just swipe the pillow. And just, <laughs> Billy! <laughs> He's just he's, Pack it up now The energy Go to sleep got, I'm just It's just non-stop You've been out testing And riding all day And you think right When you get back to the hotel room It's going to be mint now it? Have a shower Lie on bed What you think He's going to crash and burn He don't Yeah No and it just keeps going, and I, go, going. I go quite hyper Before bedtime yeah. To be fair I'm like a small child oh, and yeah. he, just, he gets to the point And he just know When I start I go Billy when he saw that he's like, mm, he starts to come down a little bit, and then he knows when I'm pissed off. <laughs> I would say, book me in any other room than his fucking room. Well, funny enough, this week, the secretary that woman uh, that does our um, bookings and stuff like that for the World Championship, obviously Roxy's not here. For races, stuff. we get one rooms. It's just testing usually that works. Yeah, sure. and she's rang up and she's gone. She's gone, oh, yeah, we booked Billy into his own room this week. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank God my way. <laughs> yeah, I can be on my own. 
Yeah, that's what you need. You don't need him. I, honestly, I just I get Snapchat sent to me of him smashing him with a towel, <laughs> ripping his pillow, fucking just, uh, anything, yeah. all and manner of stuff. Uh, it's just abuse. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> it basically it is. is. It is. And I don't get that reflection in my paycheck for that. <laughs> I don't. You know what I mean? It's not what I sign up for. I um, I've got a question on here again. I can remember it. Someone wrote something along the lines of, "Did you ever get paid your fifty pound for fixing the gazebo the other week?" Yes, uh, I actually 60. did. And it was he got sixty because I didn't have change. Hey, profited. Yeah. Mm. Well, at least you paid him. Yeah, yeah no, that was fair. He said I didn't actually vlog that. I don't think. I think I forgot to put that in the vlog. Yeah. I don't. I was happy. Well, you can see, but it works. It works. Right? Now, to be fair to him, I wasn't that impressed that he just used a block of wood, and he didn't even do it. He, but he'd outsourced it. So I give. So I said to him, if this gazebo goes back down. Un- without being broken then I'll give you a 60 quid in and he put it down and it was it took me about 10 minutes to put it down was pu- I was just pushing the corners he wouldn't let anyone else help him he was like you've got to be gentle yeah. <laughs> and it went back down so I give him his 50 quid which turned out to be 60 quid because no one had a tenner wow. yeah but I paid for the takeaway so in the end it was about 40 quid so yeah that's fair enough yeah, yeah. Um, we've um, we've been building a motocross track this last few weeks have you seen the video of him doing whips and scrubs yeah yeah, I can actually watch them now. Big fat, dirty whips. It was. I was impressed. A lot of mm. people were impressed with you. A lot of people. To be fair, it's it has surprised me. Yeah, to, uh, Stan can vouch for it though because he's seen the early days whips. Yeah, I, I sort of want to know this. Like when you said this 2017 Billy that was fucking loose as anything. How loose are we talking? I found about? right. I'll show loose, you. Loose as in. He knew what he was doing, but couldn't do it, or just no, loose. No, 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 no. no it's just, just he, he I, didn't I, know what crashes, he was doing. <laughs> 2017 and 2018, the crashes that I had and walked away from were just ridiculous. Like, yeah, because coming from trials, I'd imagine you to be like quite steady, but it sounds like you're just wide open. No, but I would say I think trials actually teaches you how to crash quite well. Yeah, I'd, I'd vouch for that. Um, because I knew when to get off it and when <laughs> when not to. I had some biggies, 2000. Two, even 2018 had some big crashes. The amount of people that but used 2018 to 2018 was probably worse because I used to, I got I was getting a little bit better. So the confidence, I'd, I'd, the confidence was up here. There was I remember there used to be a, that a massive quad at Fat Cat, and I just com- I landed completely off the side of the track once into just the soft stuff on the side. That, that was, was like for That was like the week before, two weeks before the last Wes round. <laughs> I was leading a championship. Was that practicing for the sand race? Yeah. Hmm? Is that practicing for that sand? Because yeah. the last one was sand on it. Yeah, yeah, that was actually practicing for a knockout. Yeah, there was a the massive quad. Um, I'm trying to think where that is. Have they changed it now? They've changed it, it was now. Down There's, the back, wasn't it? Yeah, like down the back. It used to go like the track used to veer left and veer back oh, right again. Oh yeah, but, I know and you what can you mean. just milk. I think Jake a carrot was the first one to yeah, do. Yeah, I remember it. Um, you land off the right hand side. I landed off the right hand side. Oh. Um, 2018. Obviously, there's about three weeks to go before the championship race. So, like, wherever he went, I was, I, we went with him. Like, normally, you know what I mean? You let him go practicing and stuff like that on his own and bits and bobs. And we're like, whatever you do, do just Don't do let not him let him out your sight. <laughs> just stay with him, whatever you can. And he's throwing these whips. He's trying to whip and he's throwing it. I really, and really he, was bad at it. And he just couldn't bring it back. Days. He could get it out. Tommy thinks it's bad and now, it just would, it just wouldn't come back and he'd land and just <laughs> bounce off into the side he'd just crash <laughs> and I'm just like what are you doing in um, just in episode three of Tommy's Dirt Bike Bits track build there's a bit where he lands and comes up well short and bounces side to side I used to have yep. people come come back to the van and they're like oh you, Billy's not going to be coming in here I'm like well, right <laughs> he's had the biggest crash ever you want to see it and then next thing you know he's, he'd come back and you go you're alright yeah yeah have you had a crash no are you, sh- are you sure are you sure and he's like no, not really no Oh yeah, well there was this little one like that. All oh, right. Now, nah, well I go off if my bar, if my hands didn't leave the bars, it's not classed as a crash. Or even if you if you, if you land short and then slide out and right like, to the side. If you, if your hands stay on the bars, it's not a crash, is it? But I it was, like it when people say like, oh, "I wasn't that big," and then some like random person comes along. And says, oh, I've got it on video, and you're going, "Fuck it!" Now. Yeah, that was quite big. The, this is how bad it was. Two, the first super enduro season it was more frustrating than ever because obviously he was a bit wild he, he was used to take chances well I got to a thing I couldn't watch the racing <laughs> honestly he'd be leading and then next corner he's on the floor and you're like oh fuck's sake here we go next, f- three corners later he's leading again 
again, he's on the floor. <laughs> and this is how it went. Well, in the end, there was one there was one race in Germany. For the first six minutes of the race, I went to the toilet. <laughs> Literally, I took him down to the start. And I right, right, that's all right, seen a bit. That's it. And I went. And I went back and just sat having a shit. <laughs> and the race is going, honestly, God's on if true. I can remember saying to him, and I just sat having a shit. And I come out of the toilet and they went, oh, he won that one. I'm like, oh, that's all right. Did he have any drama? No, no, he was good. <laughs> I'd missed half of it. I'd watched the last two minutes. Oh, God. Yeah, right. they were loose, loose times. I'm happy to make it through that period of my life alive. Yeah, um, yeah it was was hairy <laughs> it was hairy every time like i would go out riding or whatever and uh, someone will just remember something that i've forgotten because there was that many moments People like, i remember when you missed that landing at this track or do you remember <laughs> do you remember when you jumped off in the midair in this track and stuff but um there's no like one scariest thing that like sticks in my head because they're all kind of scary if you know what i mean i wasn't scared of do you remember 2017 first ever time on a super enduro track on the two stroke yeah, that was really scary. That was loose. I've got Super videos. Enduro tracks on two strokes is a bit. Uh, well, yeah, but if it was just a full extreme two stroke because so basically I'd, I'd signed for the factory. That was like my first year, and and I'd just signed to do outdoor races or whatever. But me and Stan and Ian were in Spain anyway, so oh, we're going to have a go at Super Enduro. Obviously, I'd never been to a track or anything before. Like, we're going to have a go on the Super Enduro track, and I thought I was the fucking bollocks. To be fair, I was. <laughs> I was watching. I watched your videos back in. I'm fucking so shit. Um, so quite, anyway, I had a day. Good though. They've now what? Two, when was that? Seventeen. Yeah. No. And you the won next, a title in the next year, when I actually had a proper bike, I was I right. was sound like later that year. So I went one day, and I f I'm fucking mint at this. <laughs> Phones the team manager. I messaged the team manager. There was still two rounds of Super Enduro left, wasn't there? Yeah. I was like, "Can I do the next round of Super Enduro?" He went, "No." <laughs> I said, hey, "Please." Sent him the videos and stuff that just begged him for like a week. And then um, something happened. Uh, Pascal Rauschnecker was riding for Husky at the time and he, he wasn't really loving it. Obviously, he'd come from motocross and he wasn't really loving Super Enduro, I don't think. So then something happened and like the, the give were like a glimpse of hope that I might be allowed to do it, didn't I? Yeah. I can't remember what, what they'd said or someone had said something. And they're like, okay, but you might be allowed to do the next one. So then we're back to the Super Enduro track, and I was just like, just trying the most ridiculous lines. There's a skip, wasn't there? There's yeah, they've changed it now. It's a like a step oh, on, step that. off on the skip. Splat to yeah, the tyre. Yeah, step on and then splat it so off. So dangerous. Yeah, yeah. deadly. <laughs> and then a full extreme bike as well. So anyway, like I did like a week of training on my full, just normal extreme bike, and fuck, I was so bad. I couldn't go around corners. I still hadn't learned how to go around corners by that point. And anyway, it, like a, day, a couple of days before in the end, they said, oh no, you're, you're not allowed to do this. Did we actually so, go and watch? Yeah, we went and watched the last yeah. two rounds just, just because obviously I wanted to do it that winter. So we decided to go and watch the last two rounds anyway. And it was... Uh, it was quite good. When I got to the first one, I actually thought, maybe some not that good. You, you now... I think I've heard you say it. You think it's made for you, that sport, don't you? Yeah. That's I your, think like, you it, love it. It suits us probably better than anything. I think it has, like, it, it, to be good in that, you need to have a pretty good mix of technical skill and kind of, like, aggression um, and, like, speed. And and I think now, yeah, I've definitely, uh, it definitely... I'm definitely of the have the right characteristics, I think, to yeah. be good at it. And it I is, think it's, it's so good to watch. It's honestly... I am not just putting smoke up his ass because, to be fair, I am quite negative when it comes to him. But he's just night and days. When you watch him, he's just night and days faster than everyone else. Okay, but no, it's just God, God. no. It's it's, <laughs> it's kind of scary because, like, you just want to rise, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I just want to pay rise. Get that in. But no, it is. It's scary to watch how much faster than him. But the problem he has, then he'll crash. Like, you know what I mean? He'll go and pull three seconds a lap, then he'll crash. So he's behind then. Then he'll pull it back, crash again. Mm. Where, well, to be not fair, it's only... Anymore. No, not no more, but that's what it was like. And uh, now it's changed, obviously. Yeah, I think Super, Super Enduro has actually helped also, like, with my motocross and my jumping as well. I think... Um, I know they're kind of, obviously, not different styles of jumps, but it just... that Spending that time and, you know, being at Super Enduro track every day and... Uh, doing motors all day every day and just spending time in the air and you're probably jumping 
hard. It's probably harder. Yeah, to because jump on you're it, getting kicked a lot kicked, more. Yeah, so you probably make you've got better, to control yeah. it and fight the bike a lot more midair. Mm. So I just think spending the time in the air with the wheels off the ground and also the the awkwardness of a super enduro jump, I think, has definitely safened my my motocross skills. I think Tommy would beg to differ, but mm. yeah, but he's just a Tommy's silly. coming round slowly, isn't he? He's, he's he's starting to. He's funny. He's a funny bloke. <laughs> Yeah, we, have, we definitely have, have different um, perceptions of danger. Oh, uh, he, yeah, he, yeah. when I very first met Tommy, there was like, uh, we'd built some jumps up at the track there, and he'd met, he'd built like a double with another double, and then a double after it. But you could probably triple it, but then you weren't going to do anything. You'd have, to, you'd have to single anyway, so there was no need to do it. But he was adamant, yeah, I'll have a go at that. And that, his first day on Factory KTM, they bought a bike from. Uh, the destinations that Tyler Rattred rode and he said oh this is quicker than the bike I've been riding I, I, I can do that triple today and I'm like fucking hell like. and he just comes off the face of this jump to the side like easily like as big as the big jump up there now to the side lands on the flat and went yeah that's doable and then did it I'm like fuck it now like, there's no way to do it now <laughs> yeah that's pro- no, no he wouldn't even he wouldn't, no, he wouldn't do nothing now bless him but but then at the same time we went riding last week he just one jumps jumps to jump once and then went yeah. upside down like fully upside down on his second time hitting it he de- yeah he still has his spells where you go fucking yeah you're proper and then 99 percent of the time he's a moaning little bitch he's um I'll, I'll play you this while we're here all right you useless wankers it's just me i thought i'd check in hopefully the show's going well <laughs> probably not as good as the others without me there but hopefully stan's holding it down and um <laughs> Billy Billy's on top form. That's it, really. No real need for this voice note, but yeah, well done. <laughs> he wanted to send his love. Oh, no uh, good. Did he? Has he sent that on anchor? Yeah, he's he's worked out how to do it. Fuck, oh, that's uh, he's impressed us there. No, of course he hasn't. He WhatsApp me. He went, <laughs> I couldn't work out how to do anchor. Fuck that. Here, play the. Oh, right there we go. That sounds about right. Uh, um, I he's king class. He, he Absolutely is absolutely class. He is brilliant. Like a lot of people actually say to us, like, oh, he can't be like that in real life, or he's got to be playing it on for them vlogs. And like, he's not. Like, <laughs> I promise. Even before we started filming vlogs, whatever, he was literally the bang same, just as dopey, as stupid, as moan, as moany, as lazy, as everything as you can imagine. It, it's like just fully how he is. Bless him. He's, he's an entertaining for the character. World. No. People have people have come up to me and they've gone. Is he really that? Like we we knew that he was kind of a bit dull and stuff like. That. Is he really that bad? I'm like, no, he's not. I said, but you, it's the way that he comes across to some mm. people, isn't it? That's how that's how his thing. But he's changed his brilliant. perception of a few people. A lot. The most common thing that I see on comments or people tell me is, oh, you think he was a bit of a knob, but oh, you yeah, quite think good. He was a knob, but <laughs> quite like you know. Yeah, <laughs> I see. He's, since he's started hanging out with me, he's been. Marketed towards the working class, <laughs> the, towards the common folk, and people people have realised that he's actually quite normal. Bless him. Um, I've got another question here before we I'm get. I'm gonna on. have a quick look at mine. Well, we'll, I'll, we'll do the voice notes in a minute. But my one question is because you told me about this the other week. You're quite good at winding other riders up, aren't you, Stan? Before a race, <laughs> <laughs> getting in their heads. <laughs> yeah, there's a few riders um, in the world championship who I don't know. It's they're very easy to get into the heads. Yeah. And Stan, he's, Stan's quite good at he gets the he gets the gist of people quite quickly, so he knows. Yeah, I can judge people quite yeah, well. He judges, he judges people quite quick, and to, and he's very good as well. A bit unrelated, but also not like at just just picking things up at a race. Do you know what I mean? Like if someone's changed something, or if something's someone's got something different on the bike from the last race, or if someone spots starts going a different line, just just picking stuff up way faster than kind of what um what anybody else would so he's always like first to have to ch- be able to chirp in or something or to is that is that like a putting a massive fuel tank on for last week's hawks and super enduro uh, so yeah, spending yeah. all night in the, in the, in garage, the garage doing that it. was a bad week yeah. we don't talk about last no, week we, two weekends ago that's that gone now day. we've we've, <laughs> we've finished that but no bad going day. back to that i mean it all kind of started um as I say, you'll all know one of the riders. It's obviously in Super Enduro between Billy and Taddy. And Taddy is he's first class at mind games and stuff like that. He is really good. I mean, he's got so much experience from it and stuff like that. But 
he's kind of met his match. <laughs> well, with, with, with you or Billy? Both. <laughs> Both. Because first, I think his first ever Super Enduro that Billy did, free practice, Billy lands his bike clean on the back of Taddy's seat. Really? In practice. Yeah, he started slowing down. I can't remember what he did. In the I, mean, I, just wheelied, the I just wheelied at him in the middle of the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> but for no reason. Well, I know he was he was doing something. I can't. He remember tries, he as doing. I say, we tied it. I he mean, was slowing down, and speeding up, or saying in practice. Or I can't yeah. remember exactly what he was doing. So I just wheelied at him. I mean, he's always <laughs> first in the queue to try and get out onto the track first. Then he's like controlling it from the front a little bit. Do you know, slowing down, going fast, and stuff like that. And I'm I'm thinking I was stood with, I think it was Taddy's mechanic, or I was stood with someone on the side, or or our team manager actually, Andy. And I'm like, Taddy won't be doing that for too long. And like, you, people could see what he was doing. And then next thing you know, this husky comes <laughs> launch clean across the matrix and just lands clean on his seat. And then that was that was literally the first practice session. So that was quite funny. But yeah. like, through obviously the, at the end of the day, he's, he's an athlete and he's going for the world championship as much as as much as anyone else is. But he just tries to do like silly things about trying because he thinks obviously Billy's young and stuff like that to try and get into his head. So me being a little bit more experienced, you can kind of read what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So like go, even going up to the start or going coming thing, he tries to look at him and give him the old thing. I'll just stand in the way. Or <laughs> if Billy's pulled and he's going onto the gate first and Taddy's like behind pushing Billy onto the gate a little bit, I just stand behind Billy and behind him and like, play with me flies or something like that <laughs> to hold Taddy up from going onto the gate and just just little things and like saying that we've tested different stuff and like what do you think to that and just yeah, yeah you, you need that that's good yeah, stuff you can, I like that you yeah, can play, you can just play him good. a little bit but no it's we obviously do have, we do have quite a good rival with me and Taddy because I know Teddy's not been scared of having a rival or two in the past and it used to get quite leery between kind of him and Nita especially back in the day you know, like him and Colton but me and Taddy have actually got Quite a good level of respect for each other, to be no, fair. No, I mean he's a he's a good bloke. He's a dick when he's on a track, <laughs> but he's no, a, he he's a good. very 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 good bloke. Like you go round, didn't he's we? The best, when we're in Spain, like, yeah. And in a race, to be fair, I give him credit as well. I don't know how he, he's. I've never raced against someone who can un know where you're going to be, even though he's in front yeah. of you so well. Like whatever line you've got up like plan he, well he just closes the door yeah he closes yeah. the door so well but like he's just I don't know if he's got fucking supersonic hearing or <laughs> some kind of reverse and se parking sensor on his back mud guard or he, I mean or, how, he, how many world championships has he won super enduro eight seven eight I think seven but I'm not sure Six yeah as I say seven. so you nah, don't, you don't just you don't Can just do, do that overnight do you if you know what I mean he's very clever in what he does yeah he's I he, mean his I racecraft is very good yeah. it's bit, I've, I've definitely learned a lot from um, from battling him and racing against him yeah but as I say, there's there's a few riders to be honest that you can you can kind of play with and get into their heads a little bit I mean with the with what they do and stuff like that you have got to be very very headstrong so He's won. But yeah, we just have a go. Six consecutive titles, it says. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, he won the AMA, yeah, AMA yeah, Enduro true, Cross as well. So, yeah. He's, and he used skills. to do some big jumps back in Enduro yeah, Cross. He had, like, he had he some big to, balls. If anyone wants something to do, go and search some, some of Taddy's highlights from when he was in America doing an Enduro Cross back in the day because he used to do some massive jumps. Me and Taddy have a joke, to be honest, when, like at the Super Enduro and stuff, when he first started and stuff. Because, yeah, obviously it's rivalry, we're going for the, for the same win, but if Billy had done something wrong, Taddy would complain. So, like, we jumped on the bangwad, and if Taddy done something, we give him a bit of grief for. And I'm just like, Taddy, Billy is a young version of what you was. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, Ball's massive. Like yeah. Taddy would try anything. You <laughs> just know what jump I mean? Whatever. Just jump whatever, have a go at anything. And as I say, Billy's come in and kind of he does the same. So obviously it, it's took a while for Taddy to like to get that into his head. That's what but, you want. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna play some of these um voice notes for you. As we'll go uh, we'll start here with Pip Davies. I think Tommy's scared to race Matley. Um if Tommy's not going to do it, does MX Bill want to do it? <laughs> I'll step in, no problem. I actually said, um, but we're in Italy for a couple of weeks and we'll have one weekend off when... Um, yeah, I don't know how his mind works. Italian. When he says when he says this, and he's genuinely <laughs> being serious. I know what you're going to yeah, Majora rounders and there's AMX Open Class. 
the weekend we have off and we're in Italy like it's just meant to be but I can't get anyone else on board with this this EMX Open I don't know if it's because it's like middle of the extreme season or what but yeah I'd have a rip uh, nah but I think <laughs> Matt, Matt, Lee, Matt Lee in the MXGP classes maybe is a bit out of my league but, but no that's if right. maybe never say never maybe it's one day Jake K but I agree Tommy's scared he is scared Man, well, and also I don't think he's allowed to do it but that's a, that's a separate subject yeah we'll see that for a motocross podcast alright lads one bang bill uh, I know you give Tommy a load of shit for being a dosser but I have to say unfortunately his intro music on the vlogs is better than yours Ooh. sorry lads Stan Thank agrees you. with that also yeah I did I do agree with that to be fair I but, even agree with it and I made him back yeah <laughs> but, like Billy's <laughs> Because Tommy's just got them words that you remember. What is it? Um, Let me tell you something new. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. But Billy's, to be fair, Billy has grown on me. I've now. actually got them. To both. start with, it was thing, but now it's it's um, good. This is Tommy's. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that's it. It's, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, really good. Right, and yours is. Well, even when I did yours, I knew it was a bit shit. Channel. Billy. Yeah, we weren't. I wasn't convinced on it either, but we can't have the same song, can we? I don't mind it. We'll uh, we'll uh, work on a new one. Tommy right? has just. <laughs> All right, who do you think you are, <laughs> DJ Khaled? Um, <laughs> Another one. Just <laughs> <laughs> just to give you a bit of context, though, Tommy has zero say or clue or anything to do with the intro songs. Um, uh, and most head. of his vlogs. Well, and yeah. Do you know what he's, you know what he's trying to tell me today? It'd probably be out, but I don't know when I put this one out, but um, the Dirt Bike Bits episode, three episodes, I told him let's release them back to back. So Thursday, Friday, no, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monster Energy came to film with Sam Pilgrim and now he's got a hold back on the last one because he's got to add more bits and stuff to it and, and he's now telling me what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I, said, I just let so, him know. I said, you do realise you don't pay me, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in relation to the voice note, um, yeah, Tommy's is better, but mine's not bad. I don't, Ed's responsible for them both. Don't give, so don't be giving Tommy the credit for having a better intro tune. I think... That's what I was getting at. He doesn't... New intros credit. anyway for every year, so... Would yeah, you, would it won't be, that won't be forever. Got some fr- we'll have fresh clips, won't we? Because the clips are going to be outdated soon, so we've got to keep it fresh. Yeah, we'll do some new ones at some point when I've got some time. George Ward. Right, Stanley, how's it going? <laughs> George again. Uh, I just wanted to know, well, I think everyone wants to know, what you actually do on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> <laughs> do you know this bloke? Yeah, I know him quite well, to be fair. He's, <laughs> he's like, you know, you know, in the village where you live and stuff, you have the village idiot. <laughs> yeah. That's him. <laughs> well, you've played that question really well. I tip my hat to you there, Stanley. No, it is the same. I know George quite a lot, but he doesn't even go into what he does, to be honest. So. Well, he's, he's answered his own question, has he? Yeah. All right, here we go. L- yeah, lucky. Boys, hope he's all going good. Um, just wanted to see if Bill would be, he'd, um, be at all keen on coming down to Australia and have a go at the Fink. It's not quite the Dakar, mm, but... Fink. Um, might be something he'd be good at and have a bit of fun. It'd be we don't see too many international riders having a go, so it'd be good to good to see him get amongst it. Yeah, boys, cheers. And I didn't actually hear the first bit of it, but I heard Fink, so I'm guessing he asked if I'd be keen to come and do Fink. Yeah, that's in Australia. Yeah, it's desert race. Um, I don't know too much about it. I know um, Sanders is big keen on it. Um, I would definitely never say never. I won't. I'd like. Before I kind of retire, at least, I would like to have ticked as many boxes and done as many different races as possible. So I'd definitely be keen. If the opportunity uh, came about, if the if the stars aligned, then I'd definitely be keen for a go. Do you fancy a trip to Australia, Stan? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, have you ever been? It's good. No. New uh, Zealand. I've been to New Zealand. Oh, it's even further. Um, but no, not Australia. Is that when you were an international six days rider? Yeah, that's when I used did to you, race. Did you win? Mm, no you went all the way to New Zealand for a race yeah you know like go on it was um, do you know like they have the MX Nations and stuff like that well we in Enduro it's called the ISDE the oh, International yeah, yeah, Six yeah. Day Enduro um, and yeah this is, I went there to race for Great Britain fucking hell a long way yeah uh, each obviously each year is different how did you get on shite <laughs> <laughs> did you finish I actually one I actually raced in New Zealand I raced for a club team 
in New Zealand like obviously you have the the junior and the trophy team that represent Great Britain and then you have like add-ons like um on the end of the the entry yeah, yeah, yeah. so there was three of us in in this team and <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of a funny story to be fair obviously you have your your day set out don't you your start day your start time and everything like that well it was quite a difficult race and I was number about 450 and there was like 600 riders. So I'd be catching up with riders in front of me. And because the going and stuff was quite difficult on one of the days we got to this spot and they'd cut the section out. So I, I didn't realize that it cut it out. And there was a, like, um, it was only the size of this. It was like a, a gully that went down and this was full of water and you had to jump across the top and the, all the riders that were, like going over the bridge and there was the, the queue was massive so I thought oh, I ain't waiting in that queue because obviously you're on the go and it's not it's not timed but you have a certain time to do the like the checkpoints so I went up this like ravine a little bit to see where I could jump across so I ended up jumping across but as I got the, the other side there was loads of tree roots and the bike just spun and went down into the ravine so I had to stand on the seat then to get out of this ravine so that was I was like oh, what am I doing I can't get it out physically things I've called some riders over and they were like you ain't getting that out of there so <laughs> I was like oh, so are you great so I've kind of bed. let the team down or let thing I'm like oh fuck's sake so anyway I carried up like I walked probably walked about three mile on the going and I managed to come to this like farm in the middle of nowhere and he had a Suzuki like wrapped off old Suzuki thing but he had a rent like a uh, what they call it like a boom arm or something yeah on the back and he just lifted you out so it, eventually this is an hour later we managed to get back to the bike he's lifted me out we got the bike going upside down and it was in the end like the whole period was about three and a half hours so mm -hmm. there was no other riders in the woods there was no one doing nothing so but because this checkpoint had been scrapped basically in an enduro you have like an hour and if you're over that hour you're out but because this checkpoint had been scrapped, it, as long as I continued and finished, then they'd scrap that checkpoint. I was still in for the next day. Oh, wicked. So anyway, I finished at half past nine at night. I was the only rider, literally by the paddock, there was a special test. Uh, and all the riders who had finished were walking this special test, ready for the next day. And there's me flat out around it, half past nine at night with my headlight on. <laughs> literally, <laughs> I was the last rider to finish. But as long as I finished, obviously my bike was back in for the next day. So yeah, that was my trip to New Zealand. Well, hopefully you yeah. want to Australia or go a little bit smoother. No, I don't think I'll get to that. <laughs> right, one more. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dirt Snell over here. I uh, just want to say thanks for the la lack of content that you keep on producing. We My question lack. is based okay. or aimed I'm at lacking. Billy and Tommy. Bill, when you started your pro career and you got the factory Husky seat, um, was there any offers in the pipeline and what made you decide to, to go for Husqvarna? And then the same thing to you, uh, Tommy. Um, how did you end up on the Honda seat? And yeah, just look into how you guys made your decisions to to choose the factory bike that you're. Well, Tommy's not here to answer that. Tommy's not here. Do you want me to answer that? You, yeah, go on, you answer, answer it. <laughs> Tommy. Oh, it's just about the money, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, We've got a lot of international voice notes. Yeah, there, that, uh, well, I, I thought he said lack of, but is lacquer like... No, nah, lacquer is like good in South Africa. I oh, see, I've not spent any time so there tonight. It's like, yeah, lacquer brew. Like, yeah. Lacquer brew, that means good. It's good, mate. Lacquer brew to me sounds like, would you like a brew? Lacquer brew, like lacquer, good for any non zafas out there. Um, as in, did um, a couple, not no real offers... Um, I kind of it was kind of done quite early in the year to be honest um, to sign with Husky. Um, I spoke, I was speaking with uh, a little bit with one of the manufacturer. Um, manufacturers a blue bike, um, but nothing really was materialised. And I think um, they were trying to convince us that um, yeah, there was uh, KTM or, Hus or Husqvarna probably weren't interested in us and stuff, but but I'd already kind of you know had the foundations laid with with the factory team, so um, so no no real offers or no reason to look elsewhere. To be honest, I was obviously pretty stoked. I'd been riding enduro for well yeah under a year at the time, and to have a factory contract and to yeah be getting paid to ride motorbikes like was my dream since I ever could remember. So I had no. No real visions elsewhere other than to crack on with it. 
There we go. Right, one from Ryan. You all right, boys? Do you reckon we can get Billy and Tommy's managers or mechanics on the one of the podcasts? Well, uh, just, I just put that one in because we. Do you want to get your manager on, Billy? Or? I knew I was no? coming. That's Tommy as well. Tommy might want to. Yeah. I was actually thinking the other day um, when Ben was on here, that would be a good question to do as a giveaway. What do Billy, Tom, and Ben all have in common? <laughs> If you know, put it in the comments below. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Alright, one more. Oh, fucking lads. This quick message for uh, Billy Nuts and Bolts, Tommy Serlins, and Ed the Gaffer. <laughs> Tommy Serlins. Um, boys, you're fucking smashing it. Wet my underpants every fucking single, <laughs> single time I listen to it. Um, so, yeah, it's not a message. It's not a question. No, it's not a question. It's just an appreciation message. Thank you, please. Oh, good lad. Good Some one to finish comments. off. That's from Carl Myers. So cheers for that, mate. Tommy Serlins, that's tickled us. Tommy that. Serlins is a good one, isn't it? Well done. Thanks for the voice. I like the voice note section. It's um, getting more popular. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I I have it the notifications on, but I withhold myself from listening yeah, to it's them. It's better you do. Um, so it's full raw dog reaction. But yeah, if you want to leave a voice note, um, you need to make an account on Anchor and uh, yeah. head to two point one slow. But you'll find it. The link's yeah. in the bio of the. Um, of the Instagram page 2pro1slow but it's actually anchor.fm forward slash 2pro1slow yeah, and there's a section there that says just click message um, I'll have a look for my questions for Stan did you go into the are you logged into the 2pro thing or did no, you do your own no I posted your story of the 2pro1slow but then put where to ask questions I put my own ah, ask questions right. on top okay so I used your story, so that's... Well... I got a lot of them. Look how popular Stan was. Yeah, look, same here. He's, more, he's the most popular guest we've had that, so yeah, far. Yeah, that's more than what... I told you it's going to take off. <laughs> I said that. Wally Boy's been on again. Would I have jumped that triple in Spain, Stan? Yeah, got, that's, Tommy is convinced the pipe triple and at La Metla. So you are... Yeah. If he's, have you still before, got the video of that? Yeah. If you send it to yeah, me, we'll put I'll it on, put it on the two pro one slow. So before Instagram. the before the rock section, the, the double and triple. Mm. But he he's relating to the time when I jumped it backwards out the corner and did a triple. Not a chance. <laughs> he's he's adamant, convinced. Adamant, adamant he's got that. No. I'm sorry, Tommy. I love you to bits, <laughs> but I ain't giving you that one. <laughs> Not backwards, out the corner. That was that was impressive. Forwards, that was. I reckon he's physically capable, but I don't think he'd have the bottle to try it. No, he's capable, but I don't think he'd do. If he's doing it that way, I don't think he'd do the double and and the triple. Yeah, I don't. I think he'd have to go around yeah, the first like, one and then hit it. The, the proper direction. I do think he is capable of doing it, but backwards, I don't think he's capable. I, there's, mm. I don't think anyone else has done it or thought about it. To be honest, as much as I would like, I wanted to say yes for him then because, <laughs> you know what I mean, but couldn't. No. Um, what's the most biva- bizarre thing Billy expects of you and that irritates you? Ooh. To be fair, nothing majorly irritates me. Apart, hey, from nicking, hey. <laughs> apart from nicking my pillar at night, that <laughs> pisses me off. Um, the bizarre thing, probably the grip. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah, I teach him how to stretch a grip. Yeah, he did. But the first mechanic... The yeah. first mechanic <laughs> The one, the one that didn't keep his job wasn't the best at doing grips, which was probably the deciding factor. Yeah, and I then, was never a fan of the stretch grip, and then you done it on my bike, and now I think yeah, yeah like, it's quite I, nice. It's just how everyone says it's weird or whatever, but like a lot of trials riders do it. It's pretty normal in trials, and anyone, a couple of people have tried it. Ed being one of them, went, oh, it's so comfortable, but it's just the way I hold my bike. I do have a problem with, well, like when I was riding trials, I injured the ligament in my thumb, which I do hold on quite weird. Like, sometimes I'll, I'll pose GoPros and whatever, and, like, my thumbs are just completely straight on the handlebars. They're not even wrapped around at all. Um, so, yeah, that's quite yeah. For the first, I think the first time I ever did a stretch grip, not, there was three of us. Honestly, we are at uh, Ian Holt's house, and Billy's got the airline on the grip, and the first, like, the he was putting it on with the airline, but he was stretching it. We had to lock wire the first yeah. stretch. Then he'd stretch it a little bit more and lock wire that. And Depends then on the grip. Some of them off. stretch easy, like poor tape or what we use now, stretch pretty easy. You're just airline. And There's a little bit of like, it's just p- precise math, isn't it? There's a certain well, centimetre st- 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 Stan's yeah, got 14. his measurement. Stan's got 14 centimetres down now. Yeah. Um, but you, I, you, I've got to a point now that I just do it with grip glue. Yeah. yeah. And it's that is, Stan's perfect. shit out of it now, to be fair. Um, but... I used the standard bike all this week 
at the press launch and I really honestly do not like riding with standard length grips anymore like I, I obviously can like it's not that big a deal that's exactly how I feel now I've tried it, it make, I feel like it makes the bar like narrower and nicer yeah like it's just nicer I don't know it's if, if you think it's weird you think it's weird but it's just it's just what I like I thought it would like give you blisters more because it's because the grip's obviously smaller, there's mm, not as on, not sorry. as protect it, but it doesn't seem to bother you, does it? No, nah, if I get out, uh, uh, that and this talks was a bit different. What happened to your fingers? <laughs> that was another que- again <laughs> another question. It's, it's out there enough now. If you want to figure out what happened to my fingers, it's in the last up. episode, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll have a look. Um. There was another one on here. I, I remember yeah. we're looking at last night re- regarding. Bu- the other side of the grip, um, something about how do you get a really nice floaty throttle on a 300? To be honest, um, just put a little bit of oil underneath, a bit of two-stroke on the old, on the handlebar, put the grip on. But with Billy's, it comes... Um, we put, like, new handlebars on. Not every time, don't get me wrong, but to get the feeling that you get, obviously, for a race, it's new handlebars, new throttle tube, new grip... Uh, and that gives the best, uh, the best feeling. Mm, but um, regularly cleaning it prevents your handlebars from going scratched. Once your handlebar kind of goes scored, and the end of your yeah. bars go all minging, you, you're fighting and you're pushing shit uphill. Um, yeah. So regularly cleaning your throttle tube will definitely prolong the life of your handlebar. Um. Hello, I have a 2019 T300i, and I'm having clutch issues. <laughs> Um, failing or dragging best fix please uh, mate I'm get if I showed you my Instagram about <laughs> clutches and about different things so you get believe, uh, that's all I get and in the end because you get him obviously people message him and he just goes message Stan <laughs> that's all the best said. one right there was this kid bless him and he, he had like a TTR on uh, Suzuki DRZ 125 or something like that and he's messaging one um, I want to do the 2K what modifications do I need to do to it and he's been serious <laughs> honestly he? he just would send paragraph after paragraph about his fucking bike and what he needs to do to physically and mentally prepare for the 2K and what he needs to do with his bike and he just, just say just send constantly it to messaging Stan. him yeah. that's all he says send it to Stan I used to give his number up when I've stopped doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to just see yeah, a ring man mechanic. <laughs> no, it's here, innit? Oh, 07. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. But it's, to answer that question, it is actually pretty difficult without looking at the bike and understanding what it's done. Yeah. Like oil, bleed your master cylinder, obviously new clutch plates. Maybe Take it to a, a shop. S- maybe it's a new spring. Yeah. yeah, like there's a million different things. Clutches, there's a lot goes into them to make them work p- properly. Um uh, uh, this is another recurring question, which is, oh, I think it's funny. It's, there's probably, out of all of these on air, Stan, there's probably half of them saying, what's Billy's parts tab? How much does Billy smash up bikes? What does it cost to make Billy's bikes? Significantly reduced to where it used to be, actually. 17, 18, <laughs> even a bit into 19. The, I don't think... The 19 20- I only rode off the year. Yeah, but... Half you ride in half the years, like other people ride in, in three years. <laughs> so no, I mean, yeah, he back in seventeen. Like I say, he was a bomb waiting to go off. I mean, we we're on about. <laughs> I can remember on the the last time when you were on about the back flips. Well, so, uh, someone, I've just seen a message. What's the worst thing you've done to a bike to piss Stan off? That was. I, I can't even get into that. <laughs> when he tried that backflip, and I'm, he says, "Record me." So I'm, I'm watching it through the thing. I'm filming him, and I'm looking, I'm looking away, <laughs> I'm looking away, so I can't film it. And then obviously watching it, and there was the one, and it just went up, and it just the stopped. noise it made was horrible. And then as it come down, it just went boom, like that, and the, the subframe snapped. It pushed it. away from the air boot. We couldn't even push the bike. Too out to hold the bike. Yes. Drag it back. Yeah, out. yeah it and it was right up on the, the top. Whole way home. And I'm just pushing him and he's pushing and he's look he keeps looking back to see if I'm smirking. And I, <laughs> I was not smirking. I'm just thinking <laughs> you've just done this for twenty seconds and now I've got a day to fix it. Oh. That's what it's like. And to be fair, out of the whole four years, I would say there's probably been only three or four times it's actually I kicked happened. my head like once he didn't like that yeah uh, I'll admit his that. Foot cl- yeah but the, f- the funny thing was he kicked his headlight but his foot got stuck in the headlight <laughs> and he tripped over, over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was uh, uh, that, and then I picked my bike up 
And uh, it, was, it, it fell over in a rock garden of a Super Enduro track. I'd buy a crash in a rock garden of a Super Enduro track, going for the Instagram clip. And um, yeah, so I got a bit angry anyway, put my foot through my headlight. I think, I think to be fair, I was just falling over and I was adjusting my foot and, and it went through the headlight. Yeah, right. Uh. Um, and it fell over on the side, the fuel p- t- pipe side, and it, it uh, cracked my fuel line. Push the starter button, fuel squirted out, hit us directly in the face, like directly in the goggles, and my goggle ends just exploded because of the fuel. Um, a bit weird. You no. can't really picture that, I don't think, if unless you were there, but no. the, li- literally it just opened like a barn door. My goggle ends split down the middle. Some of the things that, again, like we're, we've done our practicing or whatever, and he's like, oh, I, I need to go through this quite fast for the to get a video and stuff like that. <laughs> no, I don't never see that. So then. He's lying. Honestly, we are there. Some obviously he's got most a lot better of the time now. that happens. It was faster when I was just doing it most than the yeah. But the we're there anyway. for like an hour. And we've done our motos or whatever, and then we spend an hour and a half trying to get a clip. He's lying. Or trying it? to do something like that. Oh, this. I can feel your pain there. Yeah, get another one, another one, another yeah. one. Nah, I get quite fussy though when it comes down to stuff like you that. You know I'm them step up rocks at Wendu. Yeah, it was. I think it was at least. 20 goes on the vlog and then we had to do another 25 to 30 for Instagram yeah, on I the phone. I feel your pain. I, I've been there. We've just, we're in the middle of Spain. It's half past seven, quarter to eight at night and we're trying to get an Instagram clip just just for that. And yeah, but I have high standards of myself. I'm no, I, I get that. I mean, it's got a lot better now. Obviously, that's one, That is a valid mil. point. You film something of it and, uh, that I think, fuck me, I wish I could do that and he just goes, nah, shit, don't even post it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot goes in, in the bin, which probably stupid, but oh well. I, uh, if it's, you know, I'm quite a bit of a f- bit of fussy with the old. And then gram content. does that? Can you remember that jump in Spain last year? Um, no, this year, this year was the wheel it? tap on. Yeah, the wheel tap goal. off the tree. Yeah, and you just think he's just done that first time, and you just like Jack. Why Jack has actually he done it. Jack Eddy suggested it, and they just went, "No, don't need to do that." <laughs> yeah, because like we're on nice our way ride. back to that. A good trail ride. We've been out for like six hours, as it was, heading back to the house. Anyway, did did the f- the first one? I when I scrubbed it proper hard, it was like, "Oh, that was sick." And then someone went, "You're quite close to that tree. Do you reckon you could touch it?" And no, no, you don't need to do that. <laughs> and then I'd like one sight and go, and then that was a great video. That. Yeah, very good yeah. video. And that was. Have you been promising some free kicks to someone? <laughs> I said that to, oh, spon- uh, to be fair <laughs> I, I give it to, to every- people. Logan, everyone Logan Strett Logan Strett when is Lee giving me some free oh, kicks that, that he said uh, I could have he's, he's um, a young lad down the local pub so yeah probably had a few drinks and I <laughs> promised everyone yeah well um, that's quite good because the question next to it says what's Billy like on the peeve which I'm guessing means on the piss yeah peeve's piss um, entertaining <laughs> great success yeah great success <laughs> Quite good, to be fair. I think you're quite entertaining on the piss. Yeah, I've got a load of questions. Why are you called Scanner? Scanner, yeah. I can remember first, <laughs> the first that that first ever indoor we went to. I didn't know, I didn't know like none of the. T- I've been employed by by us. No, I wasn't employed no, then. Actually, you employed. you're lucky to get employed. After yeah, these I objects. wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't employed. Anybody knew Husky. who you were. Yeah, and we'd gone. We'd gone out. Obviously, after the Super Enduro. It got what got wild. Anyway, we're walking. We're trying to walk back to the hotel, um, and it's like five in the morning, five thirty in the morning. And you know, in like France, in a fancy town, they've got like the the swimming pools in the middle of the roundabouts, mm-hmm. like with the statue and everything. I like don't that. think they're called swimming pools, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I completely things. missed that. <laughs> <laughs> They're called fountains, mate. Yeah, fountains. Yeah, that's what it is. Fountain in the middle of a roundabout. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's with a what fucking I'm... statue in the middle. <laughs> swimming pool. Is that what you do when you get pissed? Swimming them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he did. He decided to got take his clothes off and start bollock it. naked and jumped in this. And about a year later, nah, longer, I reckon. Was two it two years later, Josh. I think it was at Erzberg Two years later, Josh and Andy, the the manager. He goes, uh, yeah, I can remember two years ago in a the fountain there was some hooligans swimming, <laughs> start bollock naked in this. <laughs> so they were factory mechanics. Obviously, yeah. he wasn't factory mechanics. They were factory mechanics leaving to go back to the factory on the Monday, the next on the, morning, on the Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Stands there naked in the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> And that was our first introduction. I said, "Well, hey, I've got a video that of that. If you want us to put us, put it on the YouTube right now, uh, yeah. we might get demonetized for nudity." Yeah, no, we can't do that. We'll have to do like an uncut. Bill's uncut. We're getting people to subscribe. To, to be it fair, to be fair, yeah. I was thinking 
You can make an OnlyFans, Dan. Yeah, I could do, can I? The bloke messages you, doesn't he, for that? Uh, yeah, uh, he did. I didn't actually ac- accept the message, but uh, they reckon they want to put action sport onto OnlyFans. Yeah, fans. right. They just want you to get your core <laughs> out. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It didn't. His message didn't get accepted. I did find it weird. He also messaged someone else. Um, Send me the link. Who was a <laughs> Tommy? I think he messaged. Did he message Tommy? He, messaged, he also messaged me saying, "Can we use your content on OnlyFans?" Oh yeah. Well, I was thinking actually on the way here. I was like, you could do an uncut podcast of what the four years no, have really know, been like. Do you know what I'm <laughs> really looking forward to? The day that Tommy and Billy both retire. Nah, we can sit down exactly and go, right, right then. <laughs> yeah. Ed's got a video for when I retire. Yeah, I've got a few and some yeah. good stories that we can go, whoa. Yeah, I think I've got plenty of videos. Yeah. So make sure you subscribe because in 15 or so years. <laughs> <laughs> Bang the subscribe button on now. You never know. You never know when it might, when it might happen, but Saturday Ed's got a couple of good slippers. videos. Ed, please ask Stan if he's bought any TVs from service stations. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I've seen? Um, which reminded us of that. We'll go back to that story in a minute. I don't even know what that I one is. I do not know what it is. <laughs> okay, you can tell the story. <laughs> Are we going to have to cut this? No, no, no. no, no you're it's not. brilliant. It's this was before you had a job as well. Yeah, this was before I had a job. Obviously, <laughs> before, before Who's I had asked a that? Uh, Rich Ely. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, before I had a job, I was like a bit of a wheeler dealer, you know, buy any. I still do a bit now, buy anything, sell anything. Well, yeah, that was another one about your match, but you can f- f- fill on with that at the end. Yeah. Um, so I'd gone up the M6. It was actually me and Paul's Pop youngest Man. son, Potman. Harry. You know, Harry. You met him the other day. Yeah, yeah. he's great. Yeah. Uh, so me and him had gone. I'd actually gone to meet Jamie McCanny for something to drop some off. So we're in Nantwich, uh, the services just off the M6. So we sat there waiting for him. Anyway, these um, like pikeys come round, and they're like, "Do you want to buy a telly?" And I was like, "You know, it just so happens, I do. You know, <laughs> I was at that stage. I do want to buy a telly. Yeah, I've got these fifty-inch curved TVs. I was like, "Can mint? Yeah, how much?" He says, uh, "He says, oh, 150, But we're going back to the boat. You can have it for for hundred. I said, oh, 80 quid, and you've got a deal." He goes, "For you, sir, today, eighty quid." So I was like, "Yep." Yeah. In game on, mint. Chuck paid the 80 quid, chucked it in the back of the van. So me and Potman are just sat having a drink waiting for Jamie. And Potman goes, did you just buy a curved TV? I went, yeah. He says, the box is straight. It's not curved. Surely if it's a curved TV, the, like the box would be a little because the box was completely flat. I was like, yeah, you're probably right there, Harry. Yeah. Mm, do you reckon I should check? No, it'd be all right anyway. So I drove all the way down the M6 thinking I've got a deal. Anyway, got there, cracked open the box, pulled out a chalkboard, <laughs> yeah, a chalkboard, and then on the chalkboard, yeah, they'd written, you'd been done. <laughs> God's honest truth. <laughs> and I just opened this up, I went, yeah. Had a plug in it as well, didn't it? Yeah, had a plug in it as plug well, Plug attached yeah. to it. Yeah, I thought, yeah, you've done me. <laughs> yeah, you've had me a cork. That was I st- actually seen... Uh, yesterday I think it was <laughs> someone had had a similar thing they'd bought a TV from someone and it, it was the the menu board from KFC you know when you go around the drive through <laughs> and it, it was a TV screen that's what it was they pulled out the box and it, they plugged it in and it was just uh, it up with the KFC it, it did nothing else other than the KFC <laughs> menu <laughs> oh god do you know what the worst thing was though I didn't learn my lesson what you still been buying no them? three weeks later I was working in Hereford I pulled up at a pe- petrol station I was working for Chris Edwards CE Mechanical just running around and stuff. Anyway, I pulled up, put in fuel. This guy's gone, do you want to buy a still saw? <laughs> I was like, just happens I did. <laughs> At the time, honestly, God's arm not lying. Uh, he'll vouch for this. So he's got this still saw out of the box and everything like that. I'm looking, yeah, I've mint that. So I paid him, I think it was 60 quid or something. So paid him, no problem. Took it back there, opened the box. I thought, oh, this is all right. I can have rattles. They'd put a brick in the in the bot, obviously in the inside the still saw engine where the engine should be. There was no engine in it, and there was a brick, you know, for the weight. Did he not start it out for you? No, no, I just bought it out the like it was in the box, so I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> nice lad. So that uh, thick as fuck. I know, uh, but that was my only two times, and that's that's it. <laughs> I haven't really admitted the still saw one, but a few people that are close to me know, well, know about it. But yeah. now everyone, now, <laughs> now, now roughly Christian. twenty thousand people will know. Now. Well done, fast. Why is Lee better than most of the hard enduro wannabes on Instagram? You got a fan here? Eh? 
Yeah. That one video you posted going up that hill in Spain. Yeah, that's all it needed, one video. Well, so, no, thanks for that. That's... Uh, Lucas. Looks like I've got a lot of fans. Lucas, to be fair, Eddie, Ed yeah, there. you have. You, yeah. you have. You've not only fans, but we you've could, got lots we, of fans. Well, we could be here all night. Well, we've, we've done an hour and fourteen. We haven't had to cut anything yet. Normally, by Tommy's, I look at that counter and think we've got to go backwards because we've got to cut a load of shit. <laughs> um, there was one. I've scrolled past it now, and it sort of said, "If le- if you left Billy to his own devices from, to to sort his own bike, how would he get on?" Uh, there you go. Go on. Tell him. Tell them. Tell honestly, them. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, to start with, never. But now, to be honest, people will be surprised how clever he actually is. He is very, very, very clever with the feeling of the bike, setup of the bike, um, knowing what to do to a bike. Um, um, Tommy's going to so badly listen to this question and go, nah, not happening. <laughs> no, <laughs> honest. no, he is. And like, obviously, he could do it, but at the end of the day, it's not his job to do the bike. So... I mean, he's shit at changing filters. That's <laughs> why, I mean, he change grips, change levers, do everything like that, but an air filter will be in there for about a week. He hates it. He comes back. I think no, he does do it know, to wind do you know, re- No, the, the reason I don't do, do, do it is because then you've got a dirty filter just rolling around your van for the rest well, of no, the week. No, just put it in a bag. Don't you factory boys just sling them and get a brand new oiled well, up, pre-oiled one? Usually, yeah, that's what happens because <laughs> it's... No, I'll do one and then for a week it'll just be in the back of my van just like getting in the way. I try and keep it out the way then it'll get back in the way. I'll either leave it at home for my dad to wash or to give it away to someone. I um, actually clean air filters, Ed, to be fair. Yeah? Yeah, I do. How many... I've just lost the question. Not very often, but... No, um, on a scale of one to ten, how sick of the phrase check the sag do you think Stan is? I was about to do that. <laughs> I've got so many sad questions. Um, no, because I, I'm not sick of it because he's actually... Because I'm right all the... Yeah, most, of- most of the time, 90% of the time, he is right, whether it's it's altered. And when he's saying set the sa- uh, do the sag, he is right in which way it's gone or, or something like that. So I never really get bored of it because I know that it, if, it, if he's saying it, then it, it's obviously changed. So, can Billy teach Ed to do a 180? Yeah, they've obviously watched the latest vlog. Good yeah. lad. They yeah. have. Um, I was a few uh, few degrees short, wasn't I? Yeah, uh, first attempt was your best one, and then it went slowly downhill. Well, the second one I got dirty, man, and the third one I just didn't give it enough. But um, I'm going to answer this one here actually because I need to talk about this. When are you bringing out two pro, one slow kecks? Uh, it's probably going to be in the pipeline at some point, but we're having a bit of a dilemma with Kex at the minute. We've got... Um, I don't even think I've told you this, have I? don't think so. So there's a load of new Kex coming. Um, they are on the boat, or supposedly on the boat, and just as there's about to ship, the whole of the, the port's been closed down for a COVID breakout. So now we've got... That took a week to figure out that, and now we've got two weeks of quarantine whilst all of the workers in the port are on quarantine. And then... Uh, We've got the backlog, so I'm not going to be seeing the new kicks until the end of July now. Oh, shit. So six weeks, oh. i got to wait. Ed's going on holiday then. Mm. I've got some at home you can sell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you... if So, well, that's a good, in order to keep Ed busy, you'll have to go and buy a load of hoodies and T-shirts, won't you? Yeah, well, I'm going to still carry... Well, we've still got socks and we've still got what's in stock, but Our there's socks, just going to be yeah. no new releases. But when we come back, we'll be... Well, when we, when we get the new stock, we'll drop with the bang and we'll start with a... Um, we've got a Billy Bolt. Collab, yeah, haven't we? Bit of one coming. Got your own one. We've also got a Matt Jones collab and many, many more. So, why were you so shit at the Manx two day trial? Because I spent ninety five percent of it pissed. Yeah, but you also spent six weeks getting ready for it. You yeah, bought did, yourself no. a new bike, new gear. No, that's told true. everybody how good you were at trials these days, and then you went to the trial and fucking Nathan beat you. Well, yeah, I, and no, Jim, I did. you were last. You were last on the hard course. Yeah, no, I completely, I was shit. The more and more time I spent practising on the trials bike, the shitter that I was. Yeah, you were it was, Yeah, it was uh, a really, but yeah, obviously Manx Two Day, for people that don't know, it's a trial in the Isle of Man. Uh, me, it, Billy, let me guess, is it over two days? It's, it is actually, yeah. Just, Saturday, just Sunday? To, yeah, Saturday, Sunday. Me, Billy, Jamie, McCanny, Nathan, um... No, Moff no, 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 no Moff wasn't there this year No we all went and, and did it Manx lunatics Yeah 
we all went and did it. And uh, yeah, it was a crack in two days. <laughs> it was brilliant. Hilarious. Um, TPI or carb? And that's for directed at you, Stan. Can Billy answer that? Well, <laughs> TPI and carb different to work on as a mechanic? Um, carb, yeah. TPI easier, less to do. Yeah, I, I get that. But if you have a problem with a TPI, yeah, it true. is very hard to find the problem. Yeah, without going to a yeah. like from a public perspective, yeah, without, without, without plugging it in or something, without going yeah. to a shop who's got like a diagnosis kit or yeah, or whatever. Uh, Do you have to plug it in in a laptop to find out what's wrong with it? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think many people have got them in the garage to just uh, no. crack along. <clears throat> Do you love changing your forks last minute, Bill? <laughs> what's that referring to? I've no that idea. Vlog, uh, Lagara's vlog when you wouldn't let me change the forks for Super Enduro. Can you remember. Ah, uh, yeah, that was the day before, though. Um, yeah, he just nah. likes giving me. You know, when when we're in the truck and we're moping around and stuff, and he can see that I'm not actually doing anything. <laughs> he just makes your job. Yeah, yeah, he just, just makes make, up make the job. job. Just just wire them spokes up, please. So yeah. then he has to wire every spoke under the wheel, or just yeah, just just get a spare wheel ready. So then he has to go and drill a moose or something. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> What's the funniest story about working with Billy? It's been that many. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where's your, Where's your girlfriend? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, uh, what What is the female situation? I've been away for a week, so it could have changed dramatically since I left. Do you want to give no, a female shout out? situation? Well, I think is quite a stable? lot of men work this, watch this podcast, but well, I can pull up the uh, the demographic. And if we it's, see. Is it stable at the moment, or are you looking? Still? I haven't got one at the moment. Are you looking? Uh, yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, always looking. Um, but yeah. I had to be fair last night one made me my tea um, <laughs> that's right cancel because with this topic one made me my tea <laughs> <laughs> when is Graham coming on the podcast uh, I actually oh. mentioned that to him to be fair and did you I, I got, Graham would be can good can you imagine what response I got mm. Mm, yeah mm. But um, if you get Graham talking, he won't yeah, stop. But trying to get him talking is not a in the bit. not in the UK that much. But I, I do think um, I do think he would come on. I've got I've got a few favors in stock. I tagged Java Signature to us a couple of times this week, and I've uh, I'd got a couple of vlogs coming from my week there. Um, yeah, we need to. Um, we do need a bit of more enduro chat I, I, in the YouTube comments on the last one. Someone commented something along the lines of. Is this the Tommy show? Let Billy talk or something. We need more of Billy. So well, this has been oh, quite yeah, good no, today, hasn't it? With the enduro, then. this is yeah, uh, it's quite enduro. We haven't talked about motocross, have we? Really? Yeah, this would be a good one. No. When's Lee getting a peer rise? Yeah. When am I? <laughs> That's not my department. No. Uh, Biggest pet hate about Billy? How fast is Billy? How many subframes is Billy snap? There's three. Um. There's nothing wrong with us. No pet hates. No. Not really. To be fair, I think in in four years we have there there hasn't been like any serious arguments or like anything. To be honest with you, it's it's all been pretty. Yeah, pretty I think good. when you grow up, oh, I don't really argue. With it, yeah, yeah, that's what we said it. We said it before. Podcast, like, like, I haven't got time. Yeah, just yeah. Fuck, what's the point of it? Like, <laughs> I've always said to Billy from the day that I've started, I've always said, "You have a problem with me, you tell me, and I'll fuck off." <laughs> Simple as that. That's what I'm saying. I remember after the first year, he, he got offered like a contract for the next year, and he rang us in going, uh, "Oh, I've got. They offered us uh, another contract. You, uh, is that all right? With it? Are you sure that's all right? Uh, uh, if you're sick of us, just I'll, I'll just go. If you don't want us to sign it, no, you? it's right because no, yeah, I just don't. To do, I just don't see the point in dragging it, was, it out. It was cute how 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 serious he was taking it. The fact I might not like him. No, I think you get on well. I think you work well together. So yeah, it definitely. Uh, and you know each other now. It's quite a nice thing, isn't it? Like you pretty much trust each other to do what you what you need to do I have to fucking know him he sleeps at my house in five nights a week <laughs> yeah Billy just moves <laughs> oh, yeah, into right. people's I, houses I do Ed's the other two so the two <laughs> yeah. those two uh, are pretty uh, we had uh, did you see that Santa Cruz bike that got delivered the other day yeah, and it said Lee Edmondson and it said Billy Bolt Daycare so I messaged Ed <laughs> a picture of it and I said I think they've got the wrong address I think the daycare <laughs> centre's at yours <laughs> No, I spread myself out pretty well. Um, nah, it, it's good that we do get on because I think uh, any it's not really a normal like rider relation or like rider mechanic 
relationship I think that we've got no I think it's not. I think it's more of a like he to- he Billy can can't tolerate many people and that's <laughs> That's the yeah, truth. That's true. I feel people, lucky. People feel lucky you. now. Yeah. yeah. No. You've, yeah, you a lot need of people, to be lucky. Um, probably don't know that I am quite intolerant to most people. Not not intolerant. Like I just get sick of people quite easily. Um, people that he's never even met, like the drop <laughs> the drive through woman at Costa or something like that. It just does his head in. <laughs> no, I get irrit- I do. I do get irritated very very easily. Um, and like especially at races and stuff like that and and like it definitely hindered us a lot in the past i'm a lot better at not letting it affect us now but um, oh yeah from you were st- really bad from the start of working with stanny like understood pretty well that like, what i was like and, and kind of what i needed and what i didn't need and, like if there's if there's someone needs telling to fuck off out the way stan's not scared of telling them to fuck off and get out the way which <laughs> yeah. is definitely uh no you have to because one of, I his, think one of his strongest points people are coming to ask him questions at like a start of a race or something like that and you know that the question the grass is just going to wind him up it's just going to start him off so you don't need that at the start of a race no. so you i either tell him to fuck off or come back later yeah come back later or something like that you just can't do it or someone asks a stupid question so yeah we, i think we're on that side we're on the same kind of page mm. so that's why it's been quite good you got a shout out here from charlie blondel who said can you thank stan for giving me and the boys a lift to the romaniacs party in 2019 did you i don't know 2019 since 2019 yeah we oh no you weren't there no that was the it was no the year you were there was at the factory that was that yeah was 18 it. i was yeah. there oh 19 19 was it? you didn't go 19 was where the swimming pool was no i did yeah i did when Nathan lost his shoe. Nathan lost his shoe. Yeah. Never no, to be found. If anyone in Sibiu ever finds, I think it was a black Air Max or an Air Force One. That was funny. It's Nathan's. That was, I mean, Romaniacs after party, Megawatt after party, all Super Enduro after parties. <laughs> Just every, if you notice what's, what's Stan's favourite part yeah. of the race. It's yeah, a right. recurring it's, theme going on there. It's the after party. The Sunday night. Yeah, Sunday night. And then, like the Italians who we work with, I drive with uh, Alfredo Gomez, his mechanic, Giorgio. <laughs> And he's just got it to a T now that he does the first stint on the Monday morning when we're travelling back because he knows that <laughs> I'm off my head or like... Or delicate. Or delicate or I like... He sits me in the back, lying across the seats and I'm just... Obviously, you know, when you've had a few beers and you start farting and stuff like that, it's stinking <laughs> and, he's, and he's just driving down the road and he wears barraclavas and he's got it up over, the, over his face and he's just driving down the road. <laughs> oh, that says nothing. Fuck. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, it's funny. There's um, I don't know what channel it's on, but I've uh, there's quite a famous video of you or you changing a top end or something in uh, Romaniacs one year when he's uh, quite uh, yeah. eighteen, eighteen, yeah. Yeah. yeah, eighteen. Um, in what fifteen minutes when it's something? Yeah, it was about fifteen minutes or something. It was uh, to be fair, it it, uh, it wasn't me. It was well, it was it was part of me. It was me. Me and Damo, yeah, mainly. Damo, when there's a job like that, he, yeah. he likes to take and control. It, and he had a broken thumb, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Do remember he, did. he, he wasn't even meant to be at Romania, no. was he? He just couldn't stay away. He just loves it that Damo's, much. Um, for people that are, Damo's uh, Graham's mechanic. Uh, so me and Damo get to travel a lot together and we're always at the factory together. And to be fair, anything like he's... The, He's so clever. He's the bollocks. Yeah, he's, he's, he's mint. He's been doing a bit of racing, hasn't he, lately? I've seen him yeah, at sprint yeah, during yeah, He was at Hawkston. Um, he did my pit stop for me as well, you boys did. Yeah. He oh, did Hawkston. Oh, yeah, calm yeah, yeah, yeah. He right, hated yeah. Hawkston. He just, it's not me, this. <laughs> too good for him. Yeah. Too good. He's well out of my league. <laughs> I just go and shag rocks around Cal. <laughs> no good. <laughs> he's, but, ace. he's brilliant. Yeah, he was. He's I invited him riding the other day because if I hadn't invited him riding, I'd have been, I'd have been a twat for not inviting him riding. Yeah. When I was up the other night and he went, what do I want to be coming out riding with you for? I'm not going to be able to do anything you're going to do. I said, all right. I was just like, if you wanted to come out and, you know, have a, a rendezvous that or something, or just say hello or whatever, he'd say, oh, I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> that Romaniacs, I think Billy coming to the service check thinking it's game over in it. The bike's kind of melted itself. It's, that's no good. And the next thing you know, there's like three of us just going full bore. Yeah, rattle guns at it. Rattle guns, stripping it down. And he's sat in the chair and I can remember like doing the bike. I'm like, come on, Billy, get ready. And he's still sat in the chair. I don't like just <laughs> didn't expect it to be done that quick. And and then it fired up and then off he off he went. But it was a year that your knee kept locking as well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think I was actually really good that afternoon. 
I can't remember that year. I, I just remember I was fucking pleased to see the finish line. Yeah. It locked. Oh no, it wasn't here. That was that was last year. I had a quite incident on the way to the airport. Do you remember? In the garage. <laughs> My rib. What? No. Your garage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wasn't it? What? My rib. Oh yeah, fuck, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was the most bizarre thing that's ever happened. Oh, you was doubled up, weren't you? I was just on the floor, like, unable to move, and then the next day was a little bit better, and the next day I was brand new, but... Well, he was trying to crack his back and put them rattle doctor gun things we in him. couldn't work out what was going on. I went to a physio when I got there, and he reckoned my rib had dislocated. Did he? Yeah, I, I dislodged itself or something. Fucking hell. And, um... I was brand new by the time the race had started, but that was bizarre. But yeah, my knee kept locking that year. I actually rode Flirt Romania on the Saturday and I rode on the Friday that year, 2018. Um, and yeah, rode the Friday on my way to the airport and uh, just tapped my knee on a, on a stump sticking out the ground and then my knee was locked, like quite a tight angle. Um, Can you remember on... So I crutched my way to Romania and then it freed off by the time the race started, but then it kept locking con quite a bit throughout the race. It was a long year. Um, Can you remember th uh, when Ben was on, you were on about the... I sent you the video, didn't I, of Nathan coming in oh, to yeah. Romania? Yeah, that was a good... That at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the we same. We need him on this channel. That was we need so... Him. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen any... Like, I'd finished all the bikes and everything. Oh, well, sent, riders briefing. We were walking yeah, to the I riders briefing. I sent you the, the time, wasn't it? It was yeah. about nine o'clock. Quarter, quarter to nine, past, I think. And the riders briefing was nine o'clock. I, I remember I'd came... Um, been at the hotel, obviously, for, for hours, to be fair. But I'd came back down to the van to um, get some water to clean my Yusui bladder out. Just and then was going to go from there to the riders briefing. So it was that like riders briefing was nine o'clock, and like, um, I was on, uh, I was on Facetime to somebody. I can't remember who it was. And Nathan. Oh, it was you in the paddock. You were at yeah. the van, and I was on Facetime to you. And I said, uh, on my way walking down because the paddock was like five minutes walk away from the hotel. I says, Nathan, back yet? And you were like, no, no, he's still not in. Yeah, he's still out there, apparently. Then I seen him coming up the road. And I was like, he's here, he's here. <laughs> just started sprint, hung up on him, just started sprinting down to the palace. As he comes there. As the video when I was filming it, like he come round and he, he even, he's got like, he's still smiling. Yeah, yeah, and he, he even gets the bike and puts the bike on the stand. I would have just launched it clean <laughs> into the tent. But he put the bike on the stand and he come round to me and I says, oh, welcome to Hard Enduro, son. What do you, what do you think? And he just looked at me fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> that same day said. that same day there's a guy uh, I give him a quick shout out Paul Mackay he'll be buzzing with that um, for anyone in a duel he'll, he'll enjoy the story now they know he is he said he was he was riding iron that year and obviously even the iron riders were struggling and yeah. I think they were just pretty much trying to survive and he said um, he, he was just riding down a, a forest road looked up and just seen Nathan with no helmet on Two GPSs in his hand, just wandering down the road. Like, looked like a lost lost child, just, just wandering, <laughs> trying to find safety. So he said he stopped with him and said, Are you all right? And, if, and then, yeah, I'm just trying to find this checkpoint. <laughs> <laughs> he said, all right, where's your bike? He just went, it's in a tree up there. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, all right. And then set off, and then, yeah, that was the... the there's a bit where he had to get his bike out of a tree with a rope and stuff, but um, but yeah, he said he's just wandering around with two GPSs in his hand, just just looking lost. Yeah, so if you're listening, Nathan, make sure next time you're in the UK, you book in to come see us because we, we've yeah. got loads of stuff, and no doubt you'll have loads of questions about it. Come and tell us your story. Yeah. He's got, I bet he's got some proper stories as well. It was first time the last day. Do you remember him and Garcia? Ah, we yeah, were at the, the finish did, yeah. line and him and Garcia. Was, uh, we don't think we're going to make it. We love everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To me, wasn't it? Yeah, I can remember that. Tell Fabio we're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> sat at the finish line having a beer, like, I'm thank like God that we're sober. Yes. They're just still in the middle of the mountains. I can on remember Face that. <laughs> it was like a plus, like, weird number. I'm like, who's FaceTiming me that's thing? And then it just clicked on, and the Nathan and Garcia are just sat there. I'm like, what are you doing, boys? We're stuck. <laughs> and that's all I said. Just tell everybody we love them. If we don't come back... <laughs> and you never see us again. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then about an hour and a half later, they come in together. Oh dear. Yeah. Bless them. They. I mean, on a on a thing, I'm uh, 
Good luck to Garcia this weekend. I hope. Uh, yeah, he's back in world. Back Enduro, in Enduro, so but GP good. after a couple of years out, bless him. Well, this might not go out until then, but yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll know. We'll know. But uh, yeah. in Portugal looks. Lovely. But on the other end of uh, Enduro GP, old MX bills. We're going yeah, world MX Enduro bill. next no, week. Special test oh, bill. Yeah. Special test bill. Oh, well, this will be out before then. So. Yeah, special yeah. test next bill. week. Not. Oh, yeah, it's next week. Yeah, next week. <laughs> There's a lot of MX bill, special test bill, one bang bill. There's one bang bill. There's a lot of these uh, names floating about. Um, yeah, I've got yeah. a few names for him and all. Come on, then. <laughs> <laughs> Special test bills coming out next week. And I'm then, looking forward to that next and then, week. Yeah, and then serious bill, because then we've got uh, the next... The f- well, the first round is meant to be the third round. Do you know what else I remember the other day, Ed? We forgot to do a preview for Erzberg. I know it didn't happen, but... Yeah, well, fucking hell. It don't matter. What, where are you racing now? So then the next... Uh, extreme race which will meant to be the third round of the championship but it's now going to be the first round of the championship is also in Italy a Bastoni um, oh well, yeah new one the new race yeah we can't Bosses. preview it then hmm? can't preview yeah well I also thought yeah we can't preview that one <laughs> um, so the preview can if you the get previews. there earlier and you you do a bit of filming yeah we're going to I'll try and get you there um, Definitely, uh, yeah. So the the preview of the of my, my the previews on my channel's kind of gone a bit tipsy. We'll try again with that one next year. Most of your channel goes quite a bit tipsy. Yeah, up, it has yeah. great. Um, a great no, I, I usually save it, but I always start off considerably more ambitious. <laughs> the other week, I went, "I'm going to daily vlog this week," and yeah. uh, I vlogged once. So, oh, on the week, and it came out three weeks later. There is one thing that does my head in when I'm sharing a room with him and he's editing. Oh, uh, he gets well angry. <laughs> The he says the same thing, like, yeah. um, he'll just say, MX Bill or something, but he'll play it over and over yeah, again. because you're trying to get to the beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it does my editing. Uh, uh, most people that through. sit next to me when I'm editing don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but because you're not really listening to it, you're looking at other bits, you don't really... Bit yeah, we were, at, yeah. Um, we were staying at the apartment in Italy by the workshop once, and me and Stan were sharing, there was like a twin room, and then a sofa bed in the living room, and uh, about to go to but we're all finished eating the next night. A demo was out on the sofa bed and he goes, hey, you put some fucking headphones in if you're going to do any editing tonight. I didn't even realise he could hear it the night before, but apparently it was quite loud. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, you see this uh, chat we've had for an hour and 35 minutes. I'll have to listen to this all yeah, over that's, again. And that's a big job. I've been editing on the plane on the way here, though, to be fair. I've yeah, he said on the way in, just before we started, he said, oh, I've nearly got a vlog out. And I turned to Stan and said, I'd have been impressed with that if he'd have said, if he'd have got rid of the nearly part. <laughs> yeah. I would have. Because um, ne- your nearly could be fucking miles away. No, I'd be ready by the weekend, I reckon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a busy lad. Um, what was I going to say? No, I, lo- I, lo- I nearly missed my flight this morning because I lost my lost my GoPro. It ended up being where I'd left it. But I spent an hour when I was meant to be packing, looking for my GoPro around around Jarvis land. Um, and then I'd, I've had an awful morning, to be honest. I just, you know, when everything at the airport goes wrong, you're running late and then the the person in front to drop the hire car off couldn't get into the car park. She couldn't get the barrier to open. And then oh God. massive queues. And then I had, a, I had a dreadful, dreadful journey here. But anyway, we've made it. Well, shall we wrap her up? Yeah, I think that's gone well, to yes, be fair. I think it's been good. You've been a good good guest. Thanks for coming. Definitely. No problem. Uh, what's your, what is the longest podcast that you've done? This one. Is it? Well, so I don't know, on par. Pro- probably yeah, trim a few about, minutes off. So it's going to be the... M- 40, now 50, uh, it's going to be the most views and the longest. Yeah. And the most quality content with no moaning. Yeah. Are we doing a giveaway? Are we out yeah, no, we're doing giveaways. We're back to the Factory Image Racing giveaway. We um, haven't actually done much plugging in this podcast, to be fair. So thank you to Factory Image Racing for providing another podcast. They um, they rang me the other day, actually. I'm happy? I, I, yeah, very happy with that. I don't know whether it's official or not official yet, or whether it's going ahead, but they're, I think they're having a stand on the Western Beach race. Oh, yeah? And you're not there, are you? You can't do it. We don't know yet. Uh, at the minute, there's a there's a... Yeah, race. Well, there's also uh, they, well, well they asked if Tommy was boy. they was asked if Tommy was going to race it, which I don't know if he will. And then he they also won. said, would he come and do an autograph signing? And I, uh, I haven't said yes yet, but I'm pretty sure he will. Ah, uh, that'd be good. Yeah. He'll have to, won't he? So yeah, if he's not something to look forward then. to. He definitely will. If he thinks it's going to be good for his image, he'll definitely be there. Yeah. Well, he'll, we're make back. A, he'll make a vlog out of it as well, won't it? Oh, that's I reason. went he to does Western Beach now. Race. Yeah. I went to Western Beach Race. Didn't ride But then. I didn't ride because I might get wet feet. <laughs> <laughs> what would you want? Three hours with wet feet. Yeah. Um, so we're back to. Well, we've done all the giveaways. We've done one of everything. So we're back around to a gazebo again now. So if you want to win a factory image racing gazebo, um, same rules apply. It's comment on the YouTube channel mm. of 
uh, comment on the episode. Sorry, not the YouTube channel. Comment on the episode of this episode. So yeah, if you're listening, so if you're listening, get over to YouTube. Um, we might as well let it play for a bit, get us a bit of watch time, aren't you? Just yeah. put it on in the background if you. I don't know. Put, put it on and repeat. Uh, to be honest with you, yeah, put it on repeat. Get the watch time up; it'll all help. Um, don't skip the ads. Don't skip the ads, or else I knock your teeth out. Um, if there's any ladies out there, yeah, that, that they can watch it, can't they as well? Yeah, or a message. So you can you yeah. can put a face to the face to the voice if anyone doesn't know what Stan looks like. Yeah. Um, also. Um, the U3 for me, which we mentioned last week, prize hasn't been claimed. So if your name's Tim and you entered and you haven't watched the vlog, there's going to be some serious what, Tim's What are we going to do with Tim if Tim doesn't if claim? If Tim doesn't claim, well, I'll have to have a think, but it, it will be given away on another. Can I sell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll do uh, what you do with Tim, the TVs Tim and sell it with Tim, like rocks in the bottom yeah. of them. If Tim doesn't claim it, then uh, then speak to Stan. We can start bidding with Stan. But now, nah, if, if Tim doesn't claim it, we will come up with another giveaway. But like I say, we're busy. Me and Stan get really busy for the next few weeks, so it'll be probably a couple of months' time by the time. Uh, like I say, oh, if Tim's listening, sort your life out and go and claim it. It's on the vlog probably by this time. This comes out two vlogs ago, but it's in the title anyway. You'll see the picture. That's the thumbnail. You've got no excuse, really, Tim. Um, are you? Have you been content? With nice temperature as well while you've been in here. Yeah, DC, yeah, yeah. as always, we're we're pleasant in a pleasant environment. Just thanks to DC air conditioning. Um, we haven't actually picked a winner for that, but it, it definitely gained enough traction after my last little push. Um, so I will pick a winner. I'll speak to speak to Danny from from DC air conditioning, and we'll we'll decide how we're going to pick a winner. Um, but so thanks to those that entered on the DC air conditioning side. Um, any more add-ons? Have you got any sponsors, Stan? No. I've had what's... enough now. Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to just be on your phone now and pretend you're not interested at all. In fact, no, one last thing, Stan. Come on. You, might, you got anything to sell us? <laughs> um, <laughs> God, I mean, I've got a very large stock of mats. Yeah, plug your mats. Yeah, I've got rubber back mats, but um, that's all I've got at the moment. So that's shit, right? He's not even oh, trying to sell it because he's brought the it. shittest blue roll which you could ever possibly get imagined. Oh, Billy's not happy with the blue it's roll. It's pure shit. He's always mad. If he tries to sell you blue roll, don't do one. <laughs> right, well, that's it. Thanks again for watching and listening. Um, any questions regarding bikes or bike setup or anything? Message Stan. Yeah, uh, Atle, no. Atle, what is it, Atley Eddie Nine? <laughs> no, nah. I'll put his tag in the bottom. Yeah, Message anything him. you want to know. My, my bike, Ed's bike, anyone's bike, anything, Graham's mountain bike, bikes, anything. Mount, he, know, he does it all. Any mechanical knowledge, you know. Yeah. He's studied hard. He's got he's got all the qualifications. So anyone needs any help with the <laughs> the mechanical exams or, or anything you want to know, just get him. He'll, he'll have a useful answer for you. Mint. Right. Catch you all later. Soon a bit. Right. Ta-da.